Good evening. Oh, Christian, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. The, the interview with Metal Hammer Spain was a little bit longer than suggested, but thanks for waiting. Those Spanish dudes like to speak. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, all fine. Yeah, no, well, everything's good. Looking, uh, yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks for having me in the interview. And yeah, um, hope yeah. you like Nemesis ID. Yeah, I do like uh, Nemesis ID. And, uh, you know, let's talk a bit about it. When did you guys start working on the songs for uh, Nemesis? When? When? I, yeah, when? when uh, yeah, we had the first real, I mean, songwriting is uh, something I do or uh, I do uh, almost kind of every day as often as I get an idea or I, I have any inspiration, I try to get it into a song. Um, so the collection of songs is always there. Um, when we meet, it's always the question, when do we start really meeting with Sasha Pat producing and uh, with, with George, uh, me, maybe Marco, who is now uh, in the songwriting team as well. So um, we started in January having here the first meeting, Sasha, George and me having uh, a listening session, let's say, and first um, real songwriting or producing session of already existing ideas. And after that, it went pretty fast because uh, we had we, we, we had to say we had already a cool selection of songs. There had been already really cool ideas. Um, so it made it easy for us to start. It was not a hard work like, ah, oh, we just have one cool idea and now we need an whole album. And so, uh, yeah, the month are running and as fast as we could take a look, we had the Mrs. AD finished. And to be honest, we are super proud of it. Uh, we, we, we just had, we took the words in our mouth like it could be maybe the best Serenity album ever. But let's see what people will think about it. Time will tell. I think it's a great record. And, uh, you know, you talked about Marco from Temperance. Um, what did he bring to the table for Serenity, you know, songwriting wise? Because, you know, obviously he writes all this stuff or most of the stuff for for temperance anyway so uh what did it bring uh, to serenity the first i mean the first intention of having him with us was um um when we changed the producer to for, uh, since the last night to such a pet somehow there was lack for george because the former producer uh, jan uh Vatik, uh from munich he was living not that far away from 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 George, so he was his let's say co-writer. He was yeah. kind of they 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 had they were a team kind of when George has a melody in mind because he's not he's not used to play keyboard or guitars or whatever. He's a singer, so he needs someone to to, to create his ideas, bring it to to a recording and to a structure. And when he started working uh, with Marco uh, in this Fallen Sanctuary project. Um, he, he, he saw, oh, nice. Um, they fit really good together. They have kind of same, um, yeah, they love to listen to the same music. They, mm -hmm. they have some things they could share. Um, and it's easier for him to get in touch with Marco than with me, because uh, first of all, it's the time, uh, thing, and uh, too busy <laughs> and to find uh, appointments. Then it's the distance, of course. Um, it's not that close to, for him to come to my place. So, um, yeah. And then we start working on the last night together. He was bringing ideas, Marco and him, and it felt good. It, it was a good, uh, element um he brought to us and then um yeah we since the last six years right now since i've joined also beyond the black um we had a problem in having a fixed guitar player on stage because um yeah i can't be on two stages at the same time even yeah. i would like to but it's not possible so we need to find uh, so often replacements for me and that's something of course which is not that great to have always different people on stage so we would like to have a fixed member again yeah. and so uh, george came up with the idea before um we were starting or, or while we were starting uh, uh writing the nemesis id music um he suggested why not having Marco as a fixed member. He asked him. He said yes already, and then we said yeah, why not? I mean, it make it will make 
all the planning's easier. He's a creative, a cool creative guy, uh, bringing cool ideas in music. He's a good singer. So uh, elements, uh, all all elements. We know him since years, so it's yeah. he's not a foreign person. Win win for everyone. Yeah, and do you, do you remember the first song that you guys finished for the album? Ooh, let me think. Let me remember. I think either it was Son of Justice or it was. I have to think again. Um, uh, Soldiers Under the Cross was already finished, kind of, because it was used to be written for memoria to be honest i was we, we were writing new music for memoria but then when we uh when we did memoria um we thought okay we have we would present our songs in a new in a new way and just want to have two new ones or three new ones because we couldn't know at this time even if memoria will ever take place it was a super strange years uh, while the pandemic so we we thought not use super strong songs again for a release maybe no one will take uh, notice of it because we always we also we already that's right but we already had kind of yeah let's say bad feeling after the release yeah. of uh, release of the last night because we thought this album is lost because no one will listen to it no one was interested in new music uh, they, the world had bigger problems and so soldiers on the cross was already finished just in an acoustic way so we okay. just had to put some electric guitars and rearrange it a bit so these two songs and then it was already the i think the third one then was um first single Ritter, Tod und Teuf. no oh, very good and then you know speaking of, of that song like it's the first time you guys write in german um why now <laughs> Why not? <laughs> because because we thought maybe let's let's write one song in a correct uh, 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 grammar. <laughs> no, but uh, no. The the thing is, it's the 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 album Nemesis A D A D is uh, Albrecht Dürer. It's his sign, like he always did on the paintings. He is just uh, he was born forty minutes away from where I'm sitting here at Nuremberg, living there. Um, he's one of the most famous german um yeah art creators yeah. and historical persons maybe in history uh um so um yeah if you have if you if you're dedicating an album to a german guy it would make sense maybe to to try it out to use one time a german a german title yeah. and the problem with ritter tod und teufel is that the paint the painting or the, the the artwork it's not a painting it's a i think it's couple work or something it's not this it's not this i think it's couple work but uh don't uh yeah don't be mad if it's wrong um <laughs> uh, so um the word and the, the rhythm of Ritter Tod und Teufel is perfect to sing so Ritter Tod und Teufel, you can make something out of if you would translate it to english you would have night devil uh night death and devil it's not sounding good yeah. and, and also if you would put it with the night the dead and the devil you're more like the first words of a children of bottom song when we were uh lexi was in uh, when he was still living there uh perfectly screaming the words and then it's just trash uh yeah. this is not us so we thought let's keep it like this not doing a whole german song because then it would turn it would maybe turn out to german folk folk metal whatever this mm. is also not us and yeah that was the decision and i think it's great still yeah you leave the folk metal to fire schwanz because they do it well exactly <laughs> exactly that that's their part they are yeah. also from nuremberg so they yeah. are still living there they can do that we keep it in nuremberg we we, yeah. are, we do our <laughs> idea yeah and then uh, you know also you know you have Roy Khan from conception on the fall of man how did that uh, opportunity came about to because Roy is one of my favorite singers ever yeah and and it's also I think one of uh, George's favorite uh thing is ever I mean um if you are following the history of serenity um which I had to do as well because of course when I joined the band they were already existing almost 10 years or yeah. nine or whatever the first tours the first yeah 
big shows, they took place together with Camelot. And if you look to the first pictures of, of Serenity, they, they look like a little bit um, a copy paste of Serenity, in my view. Um, so I just know, of course, that he George is a diehard fan of the first days of Camelot and, of course, a big fan of Roy Khan. So it was on his bucket list ever, if it's possible, uh, uh, doing a duet with Roy Khan and getting him for one song because he is kind of a inspiration for him yeah. and for the band and then we had a song uh we thought this could be a cool song for a duet we asked him he said amazing song i love to do it and wanted to do it and yeah we are still happy it's magic what he did to fall of man um i love i mean i'm not that into camelot to be honest but this strange this kind of singing this yeah. Yeah, more opera acting even when he's just singing you can feel that there's a person not just sitting on on a on a, on a chair he's like yeah. there is acting in his voice that's amazing and it's super cool fitting to george voice so they they that that's a cool combination and yeah I could I could do it again, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe for the next record, another duet. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? And when you write, you go primarily primarily on the guitar, because I see keyboards there as well. Um, what is your main source of writing normally? It's it depends. I mean, um, when I when I was starting writing on music, of course, I was all the time first thinking about guitars because I'm a guitar player. But that days I was not that into singing. I was not into orchestration. I was not into all these other elements. But in the last 10 years, let's say, since I joined Serenity, since my uh, since I, I'm in Beyond the Black and I'm also there rewriting songs, um, I changed a lot because now it's more about the melody. It's more about the general vibe the general soundscape of the whole song um so as i got learned also piano keyboards all the things um, i mean i had all every, every time every time i had a keyboard with me but it's more like i'm not thinking first about the guitar sometimes it's happening that i have a strong riff that i have the idea oh there's a, the drum groove and i want to just feature the the guitars um but it's i think way more uh, way more often happening that i'm sitting here singing and trying to arrange already with a piano yeah to, to give it because it's it's giving you a better view a better preview better said a better preview how the song could feel and how the song could sound in our way of music because writing to an existing melody to an existing kind of a bit of piano arrangement, a drum a pattern, and then a strong riff. I think it's easier than having a riff and trying to fit a melody. It, mm. it, it's easier now nowadays for me, even though, like I said, some some songs, it's like, I think End of Babylon, uh, this dropped A uh, riff I wrote, it was more, I wanted to have, I think, I don't know, it, I, I, I thought I wanted to have something more da-da-da, Da, 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 this let's say Rammstein idea this yeah. more industrial this there's one tone but it's so strong kicking you and you're like you have to do this you yeah. know it's just <laughs> just giving you this and, and 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 that was maybe more a song for example just to take one example out of a lot um where I was first thinking about let's let's try a, a, a riff and then try to combine it with an already existing uh, melody. But yeah, it mm. depends. Like say, it's it's every every song, every day it's different. Yeah. What comes first? First in, first out. Yeah. And but but when you're right, because you talked about Beyond the Black and you know other projects that you might, you know, write to. And uh, when you go into that process, let's say you have an idea, do you know if that idea it's better, let's say, with Beyond the Black or with Serenity. Do you have that no. notion? No, <laughs> never. The, the, that it's it happened already many times. I think, yeah, two, three times. I mean, in 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 my uh, thinking, it, it's already many times. But like, for example, um, last record, um, Souls and Sins. It was a, it was written for Beyond the Black. It was in the song pool for I think Horizons, and. 
I, I, I kept it in a way. I, I, I had already presented to Jennifer thing and I had it already uh, in our songwriting team. But then I said, hey, guys, we have a lot of other cool songs. Let's let me take this again out of it. I, there is the other band uh, writing also their, their album soon. Let's let's try there. I think it's better. It's sometimes I mean, the the bands are different. They are getting more and more away from each other because we are we are we are still melodic, symphonic. But yeah, Beyond the Black is is even more now more guitar more rocky and of course female other ranges other arrangements um serenity is a male band it's uh pow more power metal it's more um so of course I, I i can switch between but sometimes of course i'm sitting here and i have an idea and then i i think hmm let's let's imagine how jennifer would sing it okay then let's think about how george will sing it and then i have to choose i have to choose which which band could could ha take the most advantage of it yeah. and then i have to then i have to try i mean the good thing is now when i started in when i started beyond the black both songwriting processes were parallel so i had to do it at the same time where i think it was just a month between both uh the uh lionheart was it lionheart or last night no last night uh um for example um solo guitars i was recording while i was on tour with beyond the black in the backstage room every day i was building up my studio and recording the serenity uh, uh album and there was uh, and the beyond the black album was just recorded i think two or three months before finished so but now it's now i have more time between both mm -hmm. so it's i think almost one year they are now in in a kind of it's you can't even tell yeah. because it's always changing but kind of so I have now the chance to select a little bit and say, okay, now I'm focusing on this band and let's see what songs they will take. And if there's a song left, they no one no one wants to have or it's not fitting that that good. Let's take it again here. Let's rethink about and let's try to bring it maybe into the other band soundscape and try it again because it's still a metal song. So do you, have, do you have many ideas, you know, like recorded on the hard drive? Do you have like riffs and, you know, whatever? Do you keep endless all that stuff? Endless. <laughs> it's really like um, that's there's let's say in my in my songwriting pre preparation, it's always like when we when I start now, for example, I don't know, once in a while it will uh it will be again of course that i have to start again for doing something for beyond the black of course even though even though we have also released a new album but i think next year somewhere i have to start writing again because the next album has to come one day so then i usually really just follow i go through the whole folders to all these idea things usually i gave them not names just dates <laughs> and then i just open the sessions try to think i have on my phone um, so many voice messages of melodies while I'm driving and just doing ah na, 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 and just random bullshit or a riff. I don't know. Yeah. I'm sitting in the school student wait record da, 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 da. okay, maybe one day you need one and then you go to your selections and then just listening to seconds, minutes, whatever you have. and then sometimes you have you're listening to something you have recorded three, four years ago but never used it. And then now it's time for it. And then go for it. Yeah. And for the Serenity, you know, writing sessions, did you got any idea from, you know, a while back from many, many years or uh, it was all very recent? And this record, it was really written for, uh, for Serenity. I, I start, I think I start, I was starting writing for Nemesis AD in, uh, early autumn last year um i had maybe one like i said uh, uh soldiers under the cross was already a song which yeah. was written and finished already um this was the only one but all the others i i put in the uh, on, on the record were really written from autumn to yeah. may this year um because of course again 
this time there was not that much left by us by by beyond the black there were some songs left but i i i, I thought i was more writing for beyond the black and i was this time also writing more for just for serenity so no nothing that i could re recycle let's say or yeah. reuse and um it depends you, you can never say it, it's something i also tell to my students it's it's happening you have to, to feel the flow sometimes i'm sitting here at 10 or uh, half half past 10 or 11 even uh, at night i was already in bed but then i had a feeling let's do something and then i go down again go to the studio and uh, switch everything on and try something and sometimes i'm sitting there until i don't know two in the morning even the next day will be hard but don't care and sometimes i switch the studio on and after five minutes i switch it off again because well no not not today let's <laughs> have a beer watch football or whatever play playstation and let's try tomorrow yeah <laughs> so. and the, you know when it comes to studio stuff uh, are you very much a digital guy you know with plugins preamps and all that stuff you use all digital or you have the you, you like to have the hardware stuff like the cabinets the amps and all that i love i love the real things i have a collection of some amps here uh, behind my desk and and i have everything ready just to reuse them the only thing is this shitty matter of time and through the last year i really discovered like I was so often sitting here creating a guitar sound or, or trying something. Then you record it, then you send it to the studio because I'm just that this is a songwriting studio. This is not yeah. I don't mix anything. That's I, I stopped it because it's not my it's not my duty. It's not my thing. Not that I couldn't do it. It's just yeah. I love writing songs. So and then I send this stuff to the studios and then they take the DI and use any other guitar sound which fits better to the mix. So um since i got uh i mean i'm working with angle since two three two three years right now super proud of being an angle artist now i start besides angle working with black star amazing company i love the amps i had i love the the old good marshals i have and all those great those great amps the only problem is that companies like i also happy to work with like neural dsp they release so great plugins it's so fast and so easy to present an idea of what you like to to do or what you like to have on your on your um on your cd for example now all guitar sounds on nemesis id are mine this is not this is really done digital but it's done here it's not yeah. because sasha said they're great they're fitting perfect thanks <laughs> let's let's use it um and i was super proud because it was the first time ever all the years before it was always like yeah i put my own there and I said, yeah, it's okay. It sounds good. It's not what I had in mind, but it sounds good. And you are the sound engineer, not I. I am. So do what you what what you need to do. Um, but the thing is, even he would have to change anything, it would be way easier and faster than having it on a real amp. So in our music, to be honest, in in, in metal nowadays, it's it's not anymore. It's not an anymore our thing to have these real things it's cool if your drummer is playing real things you don't trigger you don't use a fake bass drum or fake cymbals whatever mm -hmm. of course we would love to do it if it's possible if not it's not possible um but the, the digital world of guitar sounds for example is so great nowadays mm -hmm. that in our music i don't think you would feel the difference if i would do indie rock if i would do music like foo fighters if i would do other styles I would not do it like this because I think in this music you you, you need the feeling you need really to feel the tone you need to feel everything you're changing but in metal you need something that's working and the people love yeah and for you know for playing live do you prefer to use that you know digital setting as well or you still bring the amps with you if you have to I I have I have that's why I'm happy to have for example also Blackstar with me because they have created a small portable fly ready uh valve amp I, I can take with me for the stage i have my small angle so i decide i have controlled everything is from a digital thing because for example sending 
sound to the FOH desk, it's also way easier to have it in a digital cabinet than a real mm -hmm. one because uh, it was always a pain in the ass for every FOH there. Um, yeah, we need to mark it. And now it, today it sounds different and this sounds different. Yeah. For the, in, for the, for the uh, yeah, old school guys, of course, we never have worked. And I would love to do it. The only thing is we are a team. It's not just that I am the guitar player and I, I'm telling we have to do it like this. Yeah. I don't care because I need it. Um, if my FOH guy and the crew is telling, hey, dude, we love that you're so happy with real amps, but we can't carry it. We can't build it up all the time. It's too loud. And all the problems you're creating and you make our life not easier, you make yeah. it harder, then I can't stand there on a stage on in Beyond the Black or on in, in, in Serenity and telling, I don't care build my stuff up this is something i won't do because they are they need to work as good as they could yeah. and they just can work also as good as they could if i listen to them so it's always a uh, giving and taking it's always like i would like to use okay can we we can try and if it's working it's cool and if it's not working i have a cabinet on stage we are working right now on with black star on stage cabinets that i have real guitar cabinets in front of myself that i can feel my sound i have an amp with me i i having the angle amp in my setup to have the real sound the real power of a real valve amp but of course i'm sending digital lines to the foh because it's easier yeah and uh so the the album nemesis ad comes out in november it was delayed for a slight bit uh what are the plans when it comes to touring for you um you're going to be busy or what's the story yeah i think um it's 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 uh it sounds great what we have in plan uh, on our plans for this year next year so now we have first um some release shows in austria we have a very cool uh, tour supporting our longtime friends in power wolf um who are not playing the, the smallest venue anymore yeah <laughs> uh, great tour, big big shows there in germany then we have one festival in netherlands we are heading over to japan for the first time in our band history in january we will do a stop in on the 70 000 tons of metal bringing nemesis ad to the US and then in February, finally, our own headline tour through Europe um, together with Temperance and other bands, which we will release hopefully soon and um, announce uh, hopefully soon. So, um, yeah, uh, I think from October, uh, from Octo end of October, beginning of November to favor end of February, that's a very good plan. Uh, I hope we will, uh, yeah also add some great festivals for next year um the booking agency is working like crazy um but what i have in my f what i feel so far um as we got so much response to this new album i said it just to metal hammer in spain in the interview before i have the 10 time of interview uh requests than on every other uh album before yeah first good job by napalm but i think napalm can't push people to interview us they <laughs> just can ask and yeah. uh, give them the music and give them hey listen to this new album by serenity maybe you like it maybe you want to interview or do a review and it's such a great response so if the in the magazines and all your the journalists or the reporters are already that uh, enthusiastic about this album and, and love to have us in in their magazines and in their podcasts and whatever I'm quite sure that people love it as well. So it has to be like, it has to, yeah, we have to join a lot of cool festivals into 2024 as well. So hopefully a busy and successful year with Nemesis IDs. Very good. All right, Christian, thank you very much for your time. All the best for Serenity, also for Beyond the Black and whatever other music you make. Hopefully we'll see you guys in Portugal with Serenity or Beyond the Black. I think I saw Beyond the Black a couple of years ago at Bloodstock when you guys play there. Right. Yeah. So a long time. 2017. Yeah, probably it was a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah, we hope to come to Portugal as well. It's always on our list. We've been close there at the uh, uh resurrection festival i think yeah. it's on the border to portugal um yeah but like to all spanish fans it's uh always a problem 
your country is always not on our routing list yeah. because we have to kind of come there. Yeah. We would love to come there so uh, so often, but yeah, yeah. it's it, you're you're too, you're too a bit too far. But um, we we are trying hard yeah. to make it possible and hope to see you soon. Yeah, there's a festival now here in Portugal that uh, you know is really pushing for you know bands like Serenity and you know the more traditional metal bands. Uh, okay. You know, the, those smaller medium bands that normally don't come here, you know, they are coming to that festival like this year. It was really the big, big, you know, explosion for that festival. They had cool. Tranquility, Cradle of Field, then um, they had Sirius Black, um, they had Stratovarius and okay. uh, Tarion. So, you know, it's... Sounds perfect. So I hope, crossing fingers, we will make it. That's so. Fingers crossed. Christian, thank you yeah. very much. Have a great evening and I hope to see you guys. Same. Right? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, bye bye. See you soon. Bye. Bye. bye.